removing the obvious, the most powerful computers connected to the internet are of the quantum type. That is, they read probability in a potential energy field that in itself is scalar in nature. That is, it transcends or includes different densities. However, these human quantum computers don't really work in a full scalar fashion like a Tegetan computer would. But still, this would be the most mundane definition or explanation of why it is scalar. Now, following the explanation about densities that we have given for years now, there are no densities. That is a human invention. But each person, each individual, will only be able to see or perceive a reality that is according to their perception capacity and is within his or her frame of understanding or reasoning. So there is only one whole and it depends on each person which parts of that whole they can see. From where to where and it can be measured in items of frequency ranges. Being that if more than one person can have a similar range of perception, but never the same, it is an agreement between those people. And that is what humans have come to explain with their existential densities, very much accommodated by the new age. But New Age is and does not reflect, other than as an explanatory model, what objective external reality is. The human being himself, because of his dual brain, split into two hemispheres, the right being the artistic one and the left being the logical mathematician lives in a perception of duality imposed not only by his ideas, but by his biology. Remembering that biology can only be a physical representation or mirror of their ideas, of who they are and of their thoughts. The brain of two hemispheres is a representation or physical reason why the humans live in such a duality. Everything is one thing or the other for them. White, black, good, bad. So due to the same brain physiognomy, they tend to separate things in an attempt to explain them, to try to know how they work, tend to dissect everything, trying to understand things as or by the sum of its components. This is also due to saving mental resources, that is, they generally lack the mental computing capacity to handle the data in blocks. So they tend to cut things into pieces that are easier to handle. But the sum of the parts does not represent the whole. Just as dissecting a frog does not explain why it is a frog, why frogs exist, the experience of being a frog. Then the existential densities add on top of that, being that there are none, but rather it is a human concept generated by a human mind, trapped in both physical and physiological duality. The same thing happens with the timelines. There aren't any, not as separate or isolated entities or things. That again is a human conceptual separation, exactly the same as what happens with existential densities. As a frame of reference, many Lyrian races of human appearance have united brain with little or no differentiation between the cerebral lobes. They do not represent any encephalic cleft. This means that they tend to unify everything. 
they see it in an expansion, not fragmentation. Art is science. Mathematics is painting. And navigation is music. Returning to the example of the frog, instead of dissecting it or trying to understand frog by the sum of its parts, what these other races do is see the existential part of frog as it is connected to other species, as it relates to the environment, its existential experience, to later understand frog and what it is even in the aspect of functioning of its internal organs. It will be done in a way that does not hurt it, with sensor systems of many kinds that can give them the data of how a frog works internally in life, to then release her to let her continue her life. This applies again to the internet, each person, as Yasuki has explained, is by right a timeline and an existential density. In other words, each person will have their own range of perception, of understanding of the stimuli they receive from their apparent external world. So the stimulus that a person receives looking for data on the internet, or as it happens today, living online, will only be in accordance with what the person is interested in and what they are looking for, their preferences and their history. So the experience of what the internet is, what applies to that person, the content, will only be appropriate to that particular person, exactly as it is with the real or outside world. From this point of view already, the internet is scalar, but it goes even deeper because multiple sources, people of all kinds, of all levels of education or consciousness, as well as artificial intelligence entities, and today, even multiple non-human races feed the content on the internet, creating a great wealth of content in the most varied ways possible. So, from the explanatory point of view of timelines seen as separate lines, what happens online and what is reported on the internet is not necessarily what goes on in the timeline of another person who is observing it. So what is probably false news for one person is probably true for another. And everything will depend on the level of consciousness and perception of each individual. In other words, the internet contains information, events, data, and everything related to various timelines that humans consider different. To the degree in which some terrorist attacks is not carried out in one timeline, for example, and in another, yes, it was carried out, creating with this extreme confusion among the human population since what is perfectly true for one person or group is completely false for another. Strictly speaking, both being right. This is a problem that has not been detected by human science due to its null understanding of the nature of time, densities, and reality itself. So the internet will contain many timelines, with contradictions and all, creating there a sea of confusion, a soup of information and misinformation bordering on the impossible to verify, leaving each individual 
as we have explained many times, total control and responsibility to discern what is real and what is not. Empowering yourself with responsibility for what you believe and why you believe it. Seeing the integration of the timelines as a whole, as a mind like Yaski's with a tendency to integrate everything would observe, all the events that are contained within the multiple seemingly separate timelines as defined by human science with its theory of parallel universes. With its contradicted data and its events that differ from what happened or did not happen and when, everything that differs that is at first sight completely contradictory, seen from above, unifying everything as a single timeline that you make yours by your ability to perceive multiple things. You would understand that things that are still completely contradictory, such as an attack happened or the attack did not happen, or this or that person died in this timeline but not in another, amalgamate and can be understood as one block of information that has a perfectly logical and coherent explanation. In other words, the contradictory form a point of view of low understanding of lower densities with separate timelines, seen from above as it is seen and understood as a single chain of events with its own logic and without contradiction. Be it objective or digital reality, everything is contained there as data. It is up to each person to be able to see the information, to even find it, and to discern what is false or not for them. At the same time, it confers a great responsibility to understand that this happens in that reality is of this complex nature. Therefore, you must understand and incorporate the points of view of other people with empathy to resolve potential conflicts, since there is no objective fixed reality, neither good nor bad. Everything are points of view, angles of perception. Many if not all of its conflicts are generated by a lack of understanding of the very nature of reality and by its inherent mechanism of thinking inclined or focused towards the reductionism rather than the expansiveness and the inclusiveness. A comment extra taking into account what I already explained above about the timelines and or parallel universes as something that we do not really recognize or which we have another understanding as a simple explanation. It is as if from thousands of timelines as humans understand them, they pour all their information about their lives and about what happens in them to the internet. And from there, any other timeline could have access to that information, being that not everything that is found there is possible to interpret, understand, or even relate to as something true. But the information in general of all the timelines is still contained in the internet, but it will depend on the observer what he will see there and how he will interpret it. This in itself causes many conflicts since on the internet you can find information that perfectly supports both something as true and as false simultaneously 
creating confusion within the observer. This, although artificial intelligence programming also intervenes, can be seen with the kind of results that a place like YouTube offers us, based on our personal preferences, being that it will rarely offer us the contrary information, unless it serves the AI programming to promote an agenda, to control what humans perceive and live and interpret. But what I want to emphasize is what happens is not only caused by AI and common algorithms, but also by a scalar effect that only immerses in the observer in a sea of information that prevents him from understanding what is real and what is not. Being that essentially everything is real, although not everything belongs to what someone is living. As said before, leaving the responsibility to the observer. This has also contributed greatly to the fragmentation of the timeline as described by Zverum a few months ago. Because as each person is a timeline by themselves and at the same time creates collective timelines by agreements, this is fragmented as more members of the human population enter into disagreement because each one, each group, sees something different. Has the internet contributed to the fragmentation of the timeline? Do you mean that if there was no internet, it would not have been fragmented? The internet has contributed enormously to fragmentation, and the internet is an inescapable quality of the modern world. It is an instrument of control and misinformation rather than information. Without the internet, we would have a fragmented world, but according to how it was more or less like in the 80s and 90s. But stressing this more, a timeline or even a parallel universe is formed by one or more people by agreements that have more or less the same perception and interpretation of what objective reality is. Therefore, if you flood the human population with millions of data in chaotic, contradictory, conflicting state, and without being able to know its reliability, from the observer point of view, what you will find is that by logic, humans will not have an average idea consensus of the real, creating infinity of thought groups that differ from one another with a subsequent creation of a chaotic culture prone to struggle and conflict. It is true that a large collective so-called timeline still persists, which is the average of those that many have called the sleeping ones, that is, the people who only follow the official narrative and are incapable of their own thought. But even with the existence of this large timeline, large only because of the number of people that compose it, in reality, on Earth, there are countless cultures and contra-cultures fighting for control or simply to survive there. This in itself is by design. Since those who attempt to control the human population unblock or en masse create this conflict by benefiting from the separation and the resulting chaos, creating division among humans and thereby taking away their power. Okay, thanks. Another question. So if these computers don't really work in a fully scalar way, they wouldn't be quantum? They wouldn't be scalar? Or 
They are not quantum, but humans make them scalar. The fact that the internet is quantum and scalar does not depend on anything intrinsically technological. The reason is how reality itself works, being that its scalar nature is given to it by the humans themselves, by their great differences of perception, which in turn is what creates each timeline, knowing that with full or complete consciousness, there is only one whole and there are no timelines or parallel universes. What makes the internet scalar is the human mind and the nature of reality. It makes perfect sense. Thanks. That is to say that people who do not understand certain subjects will not be able to see or perceive them, such as this disclosure. Yes, exactly. They enter into dissonance and the perception of denying everything as true because it is not fit into the concepts of their reality that they have formed for themselves. However, and as it happens for anyone, the reality that differs is still there. They need to have agreements of perception come from the same framework of knowledge to be able to understand a certain topic or another. As explained before, what is real for one person is not necessarily so for another, but the greater the awareness, the greater the understanding of all things and on all issues, which allows a person with a higher consciousness to perfectly understand how another person or group below it thinks, but not the other way around. So through the internet, we can know the frequency range of people according to the number of visits in the videos. We will see in what frequency they are since not all the videos have the same visits. If humanity's frequency was rising, would these types of videos be more sought after? That's true, yes. It is like a consciousness meter because you're only according to the frequency of thought you have. Point aside, people seek spirituality, but they're stuck in a certain level that is accepted by the larger group that controls those concepts. What is accepted by the majority. So people on block will take this as a seemingly more reliable and few will dare to go beyond, to perceive or to consider other ways of seeing the same. And the same goes for the subject of UFO and ET researchers. It is the same. They stay within what is comfortable in the socially accepted range, in search of approval and reinforcement from their friends, and they lack the ability to see the obvious that is in front of them. They will criticize those who do not understand them and will call them asleep. But just like what the sleeping ones do with them, they will criticize those who are above and call them crazy. Everyone believes they are at the peak of wisdom when in fact no one is and there will always be someone higher than yourself. They lack humility. They are more interested in being socially accepted in their particular group than in the search of the truth that they claim they seek. Okay, so the internet serves the cabal to know the rate of awakened ones taking as a reference channels like ours. Yes, they use it as reference because I do it for the Tigetans. There are really no timelines, no densities. It is just the range of perception of each observer. So everything is contained there on the internet and people will only see what they're entitled to see according to their level of consciousness and what is outside they will only interpret as garbage and 
misinformation. Yes, the timelines intersect and information that differs is shared between the same people and their different lives. But seen from the point of view of a whole, as already explained above, there is no such thing as other timelines with the same people but doing other things. But everything is amalgamated into a single event or line. Mixing up the contrary lines of people who are the same but have made other decisions looks incomprehensible from 3D, but from above, yes. It is understood and forms a single block or super high perception timeline such as 9D or even higher. In other words, with more perception and more understanding what could be described as joining the apparently different timelines to form a single super timeline made up of many small ones. No matter how different the events in them or the time may be that are totally contradictory, yet they form a greater, much higher understanding and existential density. Good. Last question. How to know which information is correct? Or we cannot know? Or will it be correct because it is in accordance with our level of consciousness? understanding consciousness as our ability to perceive multiple things. Things, data, whatever, are not correct or incorrect, neither true or false. It is the observer who gives them that value with his own scale of values and according to what he knows and what fits into the framework of reference that he has created or accepted for himself as objective reality. The observer has two options. One, going with the mainstream and comfortably believing whatever the authorities tell you to believe. Two, taking your own responsibility to learn everything you can about all possible topics and build your own conceptual framework from which to decide for yourself what is real and what is not. Option one leads to disaster and the end of civilization. Option two leads to freedom and a free holographic society. You decide.